In today's project, we are going to make a basic password door lock system. We are not going to use a keypad matrix. We will create this app using the MIT App Inventor tool that allows you to create apps like this so that we can send the password and check if it's the right one. We turn the solenoid on for a few seconds. Otherwise, we send the message wrong password. You could also follow the same steps if you are using an Arduino board, but in this case, you have to add a Bluetooth module like the HC05 and connect it like this. Then you will be able to connect to the Bluetooth device of the ESP32 microcontroller from devices and select ESP32 Bluetooth. And there you go, we have connected. If we send the wrong password, we have this notification, wrong password. But if it's the right one that you can change from the code, the solenoid door lock opens for five seconds, then it closes automatically. So before we get started, make sure to like the video if you like it. And without any further ado, let's get started. First, I want to create the app using the MIT App Inventor tool by going to this link. So this tool is free. You just need to create an account using an email and password. And if you want to learn more about this tool, make sure to watch my previous video. I've talked about it in details. Here I'm going to go a little bit fast because we have the same logic. We can start a new project by selecting start a blank project. Or you could go to start a new project and we can give it a name like password Bluetooth lock. Then we can hit OK. Basically this tool is divided into two sections. We have the designer in which we are going to design our app by dragging and dropping some elements like the buttons. Then we'll move on to the block section which we use to add the logic of our app, like sending the password when we click on the send button. Normally we start by designing the app. To make it a little bit clean, I'm gonna add few uh, horizontal arrangement to arrange the elements horizontally. Let's drag this layout and I want three. We're gonna change its width to the width of the mobile device by selecting the arrangement. And from the properties section, we have height, width and so on. For the width, I'm going to use fill parent and let's set the height to 70 pixels. The same thing for the other arrangements. For the last one, I want to make it fill parent. You could also change the background of these elements to improve the look of your app. By changing the background color, I want to use a blue one. You could also select a custom color. Then I want to use a gray color. And for this arrangement, let's change it to light gray. After that, I want to add the list picker, which we're going to use to select the Bluetooth device by going to user interface and drag list picker. The same thing, let's change its size as well as the look of this button from the properties section, like the text color to magenta. For the background, I'm going to use a yellow color. Let's change its width and height. We can change the text to devices and the font size to 25 or 24. Next, I'm going to add a text so that we can know whether we are connected or not by dragging the label and increase the font size to 24 as well. By default, it's going to be not connected. And we're going to use a red color for that. And let's make it in the center of the layout by selecting the arrangement, horizontal arrangement and align it vertically by selecting center. Then we're going to add a text like password, which is a label. And most importantly, we have to drag in the password text box so that we can write the password. And finally, we're going to add the send button. I want to put it in the center and change the look of this button. So I'm going to go a little bit fast. But before we move on to the block section, we have to add few other components so that we can use the Bluetooth capability. And the component is under connectivity. We have to drag in the Bluetooth client. Now we can move on to the block section. First, we're going to add the connectivity logic using our list picker. We have to select it from here. Then you will see a few blocks like after picking. So before we pick up a Bluetooth device, we have to set our devices and select it list picker again. We want to set the list picker elements to under this event. So you have to drag it like this. And to get the Bluetooth devices, we have to go under Bluetooth client. And I think you guess it. We have Bluetooth client addresses and names. 
And once we pick up the device, we have to get connected to it. For that, we are going to use a list picker again and the event after picking. So here I have made a mistake. Before picking, we have to set the devices. For that, you could drag in this under this event. But after we pick up an element, we are going to use Bluetooth client connect address from the selection of this list using list picker one selection. But you notice that we can't put this under this event. And that's because our event returns true or false to check whether it is done successfully or not. To fix that, we have to add a logic or control, and it is called the if else statement. So if the Bluetooth client gets connected to the list picker selection, we're gonna change our label to connected and set its color to green. But first we need to add another if statement. We're gonna use Bluetooth client is connected. If it's the case, we can adjust our first label, which is this one, like setting the text color to a green one from colors and we have this one that we can drag you see it's so simple we only need to drag and drop these blocks to add the logic of our app without writing any line of code then I want to change the text as well using set label text to the text connected successfully or simply connected and if something went wrong we are going to change its color to red and the message failed to connect for that, I will duplicate these blocks using right-click duplicate and put it under the else and change the color to a red one and the message failed to connect. But we need to achieve all of these things. Once we pick up one of the elements, you have to drag all of these under this event. Now we have done the most difficult part, which is the connection part. Finally, we need to check if the button is clicked using the event when button one click. In such case, we are going to check whether we are connected using the control if else statement. And let's duplicate this one. I don't want to search for it again. Then we want to send the password by dragging this block send text using our password text box text. But if we are not connected, you could add the message please connect. So let's duplicate these using right click duplicate and let's write please connect and change the color to red as well we can go to build and android apk this tool is generating our apk file that we can install and there you go we have the apk file we can download it after that we can copy it inside of our phone and let's install it by pressing the apk file and hit install make sure to install anyway and before we test it Let's talk about the circuit schematic diagram. You could download the project files from the link under description. You will find the APK file as well as the circuit schematics and the code for an Arduino board and the ESP32 microcontroller. In this project, I have used the TIP120 Darlington transistor, which allows you to control a high voltage device that works with a voltage between 5 and 60 volts. In this case, we are going to use it to control our solenoid door lock that works with a 12 volt power supply. You note a few things in our circuit. This component is called a diode that is used to protect our circuit from the back EMF because the solenoid generates a voltage in the opposite side whenever we turn it on and off. To avoid that, we add this diode. Make sure to connect the positive lead to the side of the diode that contains this white line and the other one to the negative lead. And to protect our ESP32 microcontroller from the high voltage device, we have used this ohm resistor. Make sure to use 1K to 3K ohm resistor. That's fairly enough to protect the pins. Last but not least, to make sure everything works just fine, you have to connect the GND of the microcontroller to the GND of the external power supply. I highly recommend you to pause the video and follow the circuit schematic diagram. I've already done that. We have the 12 volts power supply and the TIP Darlington transistor. To connect all of these components, I have used the breadboard and few jumper wires. Next, we can move on to the code and check how this project works. In my case, I'm gonna use the ESP32 code. Let's open it up. On top, I have added the Bluetooth serial library that allows you to use the Bluetooth capability of the board. Then I have created this Bluetooth serial object, which is called serial BT. Then I have created few variables for our circuit, like the lock pin, which is 2, 
if you have used a different one, make sure to change it from here. Then we have two strings. The first one is called data that I'm going to use to put the password from the app. And the other string is the correct password. For now, I have set it to 1234. And that's all what you need. Under the setup function, we have serialbt.begin to enable the Bluetooth module. And this takes the name of the device that you can check for. And we need to set our pin as an output device so that we can turn it on and off by sending a voltage to the base pin under the loop function, which is called over and over again. We check if we have received a message from the app using serialbt.available. If it's the case, we read the password character by character using a while loop. Then we add this character to the string data. Finally, we have to check if it's the master key, which is this one. We turn the solenoid on using the digital write command. This takes in the lock pin and the high keyword. Then we wait five seconds. You can change it if you want and turn it off again. But if it's wrong, we wait a bit. And finally, I have reset the data string so that we can read the next password. You notice that the sketch is sending the messages access guaranteed if the password is right. Otherwise, we send the message wrong password. But we haven't added the logic to receive that and display it on the screen. For that, you have to set some sort of timer that checks whether we have messages that are sent from the ESP32 microcontroller. And the component that is responsible for that is under sensors. And it is called the clock, which is invisible, like the Bluetooth client component. Then we can move on to the blocks and use it to read our message by selecting clock and drag in this event when clock timer. The same thing, we have to check if we are connected to the Bluetooth module using the control, if then, and drag in Bluetooth client is connected. In such case, we need to check if we have received a message using a second if statement and go to the Bluetooth client. Here we have the bytes available to receive. If it's greater than zero, that means we have a message that we can print. Let's go on top and under math, we have this section. Let's drag it so that we can check if the bytes available to receive is greater than the value zero. In such case, we can print it using another label, or you could use a notification. That's much better. Under user interface, we have to drag in the notifier that allows you to display notifications. Then let's get back to the blocks and use it for our logic. I'm going to use show alert notice and display our text from the Bluetooth client using the block receive text number of bytes. And from the other side, we need to select the bytes. So I'm going to duplicate it. That will convert it to a string so that we can display it. And that's pretty much it. You have to rebuild the APK file and install it. And here it is. You have to open up Bluetooth and pair your device with the ESP32 microcontroller by selecting it from here. And make sure it is under the paired devices and select it from devices. And there you go, we have connected. And let's send a wrong password. And nothing happens. But if we use our password, one, two, three, four, and send it, you see that the solenoid door lock opens for five seconds and we have access guaranteed. I think that's pretty much it guys for this video. I hope you like this project. If you have any question or comment about it, make sure to write it under the comment section down below. And I will see you in the next one.